A botch raid. An officer down. A 26-year-old woman shot dead by police. Is the oh alert able to talk to you? No, breathe. Her name, Brianna Taylor. So what happened? It's just after midnight on March 13th, 2020, and officers with the Louisville Metro Police Department pull into this apartment complex in Louisville, Kentucky. They're here to execute a search warrant in a narcotics investigation. Their target is apartment four, where Brianna Taylor lives. She helped save lives as an emergency room technician. 2020 was going to be her year. She felt like 2020 was definitely gonna be her year because she was able, like, everything went the way she wanted it to go. Being able to get her car, being able to start getting enrolled for school, being able to just get that her foot out the door again. To be able to get a new beginning. 911 operator Harris, where is your emergency? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door inside my girlfriend. Minutes after the raid begins, Brianna Taylor will be dead. Months later, her name has become a rallying cry at protests across the country. Celebrities, athletes, and politicians have called for the officers involved to be held accountable. Say her name! Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor's life matters. But authorities have released little information about what happened that night. Some news reports and social media posts have said that police went to the wrong apartment, that Brianna Taylor was asleep when she was shot, that it was a no-knock raid. None of that is true. NBC News pulled together audio, video, documents, and interviews to get a fuller picture of what did happen that March night. To try to understand why police were there to begin with and how this 26-year-old woman was killed in her own home. It's an ordinary night for Brianna Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker. The couple, who've been close for years, go to dinner at Texas Roadhouse. She's literally my best friend. Like, there's nothing we didn't talk about. And I talk to her every single day. Meanwhile, Brianna Taylor's sister and roommate, Janiah Palmer, is 2,000 miles away visiting a friend in California. Despite being six years apart, the sisters are nearly inseparable. We basically did everything together. We would go grocery shopping, go hang out with her friends together. Um, anytime she left the house, I pretty much went with her. I was her shadow. By about 10 p.m., Brianna Taylor and Kenneth Walker are back at her apartment on Springfield Drive. They settle in to watch a movie in her bedroom. Across town, officers prepare for the raid. This whiteboard shows Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly, Officer Miles Cosgrove, and Officer Brett Hankison are on the team going to execute the search warrant for Breonna Taylor's apartment. All three officers would end up firing their weapons that night. This warrant and internal documents indicate police had evidence that the target of their investigation, a man Breonna Taylor had dated, received mail at her house and had listed her address as his own. This is Sergeant Amanda Seeley of the Louisville Metro Police Department's Public Integrity Unit. Today's date is Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. This will be a recorded statement from Sergeant John Mattingly. She held, possibly held dope for him, received the packages, and held his money. Police did obtain a no-knock warrant for Taylor's apartment, which has been widely reported. But Sergeant Mattingly says police concluded it was a soft target, so they would instead knock and announce themselves. At least seven officers showed up that night with a battering ram. It's 12.35 a.m. and Brianna Taylor has just dozed off. Kenneth Walker is barely awake beside her. We're home. Mm -hmm. We're in the bed. It's 12 at night. Our day is over. Officers arrive at the apartment complex. Mattingly says he's in plain clothes with a vest that reads police. They line up. Mattingly is to the left of Taylor's front door with Officer Cosgrove and another officer behind him. Officer Hankison and the other officers are on the right. I knocked on the door, banged on it. Um, we didn't announce the first couple because our intent was not to, to hit the door. 
Our intent was to give her plenty of time to come to the door because they said she was probably there alone. Mattingly says they banged on the door six or seven times. There's a loud bang at the door. She pops up out of sleep to scare her to death. Me too. Like, who is that? First thing she said was, who is it? No response. So we like, what the heck? So then I grabbed my gun, which is legal, like I'm licensed to carry everything. So at that point, we started announcing ourselves, please, please come to the door. Please, we have a search warrant. Here, accounts diverge. Walker says they ask who it is and hear no response. Mattingly says the officers repeatedly announce police. A minute after the first knock, police make the call to hit the door with a battering ram. So I looked at Mike and said, go ahead. Um, so he hits the first time and it hits right on the door handle and didn't, didn't move the door. And every time he hits, people are announcing, please search warrant, please search warrant. Mattingly says it takes three hits before the door flies open. The, like, the door like comes like off the hinges. So I just let off one shot. Like I still can't see who it is or anything. Mattingly describes what he saw as he entered the apartment. I'm face on about probably 20 feet away, right down the hallway. There's a bedroom door on the right, and there's a the male and a female. The male's closest to the door, so it's to my right. And as I turn the, the doorway, he's in a stretched out position with his hands with a gun. And as soon as I clear, he fires. Boom. Again, accounts diverge. Walker says the door is open and he can't see who's breaking into the apartment when he fires the shot. Sergeant Mattingly says he enters the apartment and can see Walker when he's hit. Walker's one shot hits Mattingly in the thigh, according to Mattingly. As soon as he fired, I fired by it. Boom, 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 boom. Mattingly exits the apartment, then shoots again. And then reached around, and I think I got two more off around the corner of the door. At 12.42, 911 operators start receiving calls for neighbors who don't seem to realize that police are on scene. 911 operator, guide us. Where is your emergency? Please get a um, uh, uh, police down here. They are shooting back. How many shots? Please, you hear? Man, they just shot about seven or eight seconds. They right here in front of my house, and I got my grandbaby and my kids in here. About 30 seconds after the first call, another neighbor dials 911. The apartment behind me, um, there was a lot of gunshots just now. There was about like eight or nine. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. And it almost sounded like somebody was shooting back, but I'm not for sure. A minute into that call, at 12.44, the neighbor says she hears more shots. Did it sound like it was coming from right in your area? Yeah. They're still shooting. Still shooting? Come on. Come on. Yeah, I need to get over here. They're shooting that out like crazy. Wounded, Mattingly says he staggers to the curb. Then he hears his fellow officers shooting. I could hear all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Several shots at that point, it seemed like then. It was a lot of shots. Three holes like in her leg, then on the wall, like right behind where she was. It was like like four holes on the wall. Brianna Taylor's death certificate shows she was shot five times, but we don't know whose bullets hit her. Mattingly says he fires six shots from in and around her doorway. Police say Cosgrove fires, we don't know how many times. Hankison fires at least 10 rounds through this patio door and window, according to police. Some of those go through Brianna Taylor's dining room wall into the next apartment where a pregnant woman lives. There's bullet holes all the way through the wall, through our glass. The cops are out there yelling to get back to the house. I have a five-year-old in here, so something needs to be explained to me. An officer calls for paramedics for Sergeant Mattingly, but the response is delayed. Meanwhile, police prepare for a standoff with Kenneth Walker, who they appear to think has a rifle. Hey, we need someone up here now. Right here, weapon, rifle. Like an AR. Cars long Inside the apartment, Kenneth Walker says he was confused. What really made me not realize it was the police, either because nobody was like rushing in after all of this happened. They all like stayed outside, so I'm like. What the heck was that? Walker calls his mother, who tells him to call 911. Okay, how old is your girlfriend? She's 26. Bring it. You said 26? Where was she shot at? I don't know. She's on the grill right now. I don't know. I don't know. 
Okay. Uh, 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 you said she's 26. Is she alert and able to talk to you? Uh, no, she's not. Breathe. Hell. Oh, my God. Yes, help. Police start calling for Walker to come out. They keep yelling, come out. So I'm like, okay, it's the police. An EMS dispatcher radios to see if anyone has responded to Walker's 911 call. Is there anybody on this channel that's out at 3003 Street? Call number four with that other female that's been shot, 26 year old female. It's unclear if anyone responds. By this time, neighbors are filming dozens of officers arriving at the complex. Kenneth Walker backs out of the apartment. Officers have their weapons drawn. At 1 a.m., about 20 minutes after police arrive, they lead Walker away. We were in the bed. We were scared. We didn't know who it was. It's not clear from EMS records when paramedics reached Rihanna Taylor. Six days later, Kenneth Walker is charged with attempted murder of a police officer. After a national outcry, the charges are dropped. None of the officers there that night has been criminally charged. Sergeant Mattingly and Officer Cosgrove are on administrative reassignment, as is the officer who secured the warrant. Officer Hankison, who shot through the patio door, was terminated for firing wantonly and blindly and showing extreme indifference for human life. Through their attorneys, the officers declined to comment, as did the Louisville Metro Police Department. According to a lawyer for Breonna Taylor's family, police found no drugs or money in her apartment. State and federal investigations continue amid mounting pressure to prosecute the police who fired their weapons that night. It makes me feel good that, you know, people are not ignoring her. For those who don't know her, now you get to know her. You get to see her and you get to understand what happened to her. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.